Hello guys and welcome to this week's episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. I'm Paula, your host and the Landscapers coach and today I'm talking about the one major thing I would do differently if I started my business all over again and I'm talking about the landscaping business. It's been going 14 years, I've been running it with my husband for the whole of that time and yeah there's quite a few lessons, quite a few challenges we've overcome along the way And I just thought it'd be rather apt as we're going through another major change in the business at the moment that I would hop on and share with you some of my thoughts. Some of you may feel quite motivated listening to them and and relate. And yeah, the one thing might not be what you think it's going to be. So if you're interested, let's go to the show. As the co-founders of the Landscaper Circle, we help you get more money, time and freedom to become limitless through our experiences as fellow landscapers and our tried and tested methods. If you want help with your marketing, managing or growing your business, you've definitely come to the right place. If you're a landscaper, garden designer or supplier to the industry, then hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back to the show. Hello guys and welcome to this week's episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. Now as I said 14 years in business and the lessons I've learned from running my own landscaping business and the one thing that I would do differently and it's it's been an interesting ride shall we speak say (laughs) so to speak of the last 14 years lots of highs lots of lows lots of stuff in between lots of opportunities lots of setbacks and the thing is something that it does build running your own business for this long is something called resilience it does make you rather resilient it does make you determined and it does make you look at things a lot differently when setbacks occur or challenges happen and we started the business just myself and my husband set it up and he asked me to join because I had my own sales and marketing company at the time and I was just doing freelance sales running around the UK selling gym memberships actually and he wanted me to come and input my expertise in marketing and sales and help him build the business of which once we saw that we could um, afford for me to do that I jumped across and we have over the last 14 years grown the business massively and reduced it and done this a number of times and in a number of ways we've had lots of ideas and not everything has worked some things haven't but There is something that I would do differently and it goes, there's lots of things I've learned. I do do not regret anything that's happened in this business and I do not regret the risks we've taken, the ideas we've tried, all of these things. I don't regret anything. What I do wish is with hindsight is that the lessons I've learned, I could have started way back then because some of the challenges that we have faced over the years have all been around really finance and I expect a lot of you feel the same I've always had no issue with marketing and generating leads probably because I do have a background in that and because we've worked on establishing a brand over the last 14 years that people know and trust so generating leads hasn't been a real issue marketing is easy for me because I understand it a lot more than maybe if you're a landscaper and you've just started up you have no idea And I'd run my own business for a year or so before Mike set up the landscaping business. And so I had a bit of a clue about how a business runs and about what we could do better in the business and how I could really help and support him in developing and running this business. A lot of things that we learned along the way have come down to some of the challenges that we could have avoided has come down to a lot around planning because we've always jumped in two feet first, not really thought about it, not in the later years, but definitely in the early years. And we also had no financial backing because we literally had nothing to start with. We'd just both finished uni. We'd bought our first house and we're renovating it. We literally ripped it out. The day we got the keys, we ripped everything out of it carpets electrics everything 
and then spent the next eight years putting it back together again before we sold it and bought this property we're in now, which we again renovated. So we were renovating a house. We were fresh out of uni, um, both doing degrees that Mike's help hit helps his, but we had no money. We we're paying back student loans. We're obviously our first mortgage. And we really had no finances to start the business. So that's always hindered us in a way because we've never had that that proper investment behind us unless we wanted to take out loans and debt. Something I've touched upon throughout the podcast, throughout my journey in business is the fact that it took us, I can't even remember how many years until we had a cash flow. And that was because a mentor and coach told me about cash flow forecasting and how it could change my business and change my decision making. So that was how difficult it was during the startup phase. Also, there was only Mike and his laborer doing the work and I would go and lend a hand as and when. Obviously, this is all pre-children. So there was no other family pressures because it was just us two. However, over the last 14 years, we have grown this business and we've achieved so many massive milestones. We have expanded and had lots of staff down to low staff. We've had offices, we've had a yard space. We have bought our own equipment like diggers, trap barrows, that sort of thing. So we've invested in the business. We've won awards consistently I think we're up to about 38 now over the last 14 years of which I'm really proud of because most of them are through workmanship design and build we've done two gardeners world live gardens and helped out on a couple of others as well so that's been really great we've built up really good connections in the industry and outside of the industry and we've got longevity. We are now running 14 years. It's it's pretty impressive. When I was re- thinking about this podcast and what I wanted to highlight, something that happened uh, quite a few years ago now was we actually got given a bonus by a client of a thousand pound. That seems like a really small thing, but it was so nice because one, I called her and asked her if she meant to overpay me by that. And she said, yeah, I, I thought, felt you'd done a great job. And it's like a, a tip. A thank you. And I was like, wow, this is mental because never have I had a customer do that. And not only was it nice to have the extra thousand pounds, but it was just nice that she actually saw our value and decided to show that she was appreciative by giving us the tip and bonus. So lots of good things have happened. Also, over the past 14 years, obviously, we've started a family. We've renovate we're renovating our second house and we've got two young children so lots of things have changed in our lives over the past 14 years which do affect impact and reflect on how you are running your business and wanting to run your business there's quite a few key lessons that I'd like to share with you about the time I've had in business and one of them is the importance of adapting in in the marketplace a few times i've adapted so we used to install artificial grass i know it's a taboo subject and i for one don't like it but we used to have a whole arm dedicated to artificial grass installation we had a whole team that would go out and install artificial grass and essentially it there was a turning point where i decided enough is enough i don't believe in the product i do not like what it's doing to gardens. I had a client who had major issues with it heating up. And so I had to adapt and change. And that meant going back on everything I'd promoted and sold essentially, and completely becoming anti artificial grass company, refusing to install it, not getting involved with it, not selling it, reducing that side of the business down. And it's important to adapt when things begin changing, because then after that, we then literally saw the kind of change in the marketplace where people were becoming far more interested in sustainability and and eco-friendly gardens. So it did change the market. We decided against it just slightly prior to that as when the market began changing. Also, it's about how the market changes when things go online, offline. So a very good example of this is when COVID hit, 
we launched an online shop because people were not, they, they were online buying. We could ship products and make a small markup. And it was a very uncertain period, but people were spending money. So it's really important to adapt to a change in marketplace as you go through running your business. It's also important to balance your creativity with the business side of things and what happens and why I even exist as the landscapers coach is landscapers often like my husband set up a business because they are good landscapers they know exactly what they're doing however they don't have that business acumen um, or thought of how to run a business they just get on and create gardens but they're slightly lacking in maybe profits or marketing or scalability. And so it's really important to part of being a landscaper is you are probably naturally creative. I know my husband is he his actual um, degree is in architectural technology with interior design. So it was all very much does design focused. And when he goes to see a garden and, and they want a design, he can think very creatively about how it could work. However, when you get so creative, it often damages the business side of things. So our most creative projects are probably have probably cost us more money and more profit because they're so creative, they take more time than you ever imagine. And when you have a team of perfectionists, which I'm lucky to have at Aura Landscapes, it takes a lot longer and they like it precise. So sometimes your creativity can really impact the business without thinking or if you haven't got a handle on it so that's something to be mindful of it's also being mindful of when you're dreaming big I'm, like I said in the last podcast I'm all for dreaming big but sometimes you have to have a dose of reality thrown in there and some actual business acumen thought about the other lesson I've learned is it's critical and that you look at the value of your client relationships and the dreaded word communication. Recently, we've had this where obviously our staff has reduced hugely in the business. Getting back to clients has taken a bit longer because I just don't know when we can start projects because things are overrunning. So communication has taken a bit of a battering and it's through, it's our fault. We haven't sat down and planned and therefore this is impacting on the communication we're having with our clients some clients are okay with this but others really want their hand held all the time and it's really important to think about that and also value the client relationship you have and what can you do to make it stronger make it that they trust you they know you they like you they want to work with you sometimes we can just get really waylaid with the here's the project it's booked in it's done Whereas actually most clients want you to be in contact between buying the job and getting started, not just with a start date, but just a general communication. And also how much value, if you really put the effort in at the beginning, how value, valuable they become to you at the end. And it's not to say that you have to coat out at every request they ask for. It's not to be a yes person, but it's just to be mindful of the value of client relationships and the importance of communication, setting, setting yourself up and setting their expectations up for you. Um, we do have to discuss quickly the impact of being a collaborative partnership with your husband. So that's me. It's been a challenge and it's been a blessing because the, the two things are intertwined so the blessing is that we're both working towards one common goal so we are majorly focused on the same things our end goals are the same we're very aligned in what we want to do how we want the business to run where we want to be in the future but the downside to this is that everything becomes into interlinked with the business so sometimes you can be in a couple and the business infiltrates or We'll disagree on how to react to a certain situation and then that can cause issues because even seven o'clock at night when you're meant to be out of the business, it still impacts. So that is the challenge of it. I think if you are working in partnership with your husband or wife, honestly, it's the best thing. Like I love it. I simultaneously love it and hate it. I often hand in my resignation at least twice, three times, maybe four times a year. 
because he's irritated me that badly around a certain subject or how he sees the business going. But honestly, I, I wouldn't ever leave it because it's become so such a part of us and it's so important to us and it's so connect we're so connected to the common goal but what I would say my only advice with this is when you're working with your husband or wife is that you allow some time not to talk about business not to get involved with any issues often the issues will pop up and we'll start dealing with them straight away you know leave that to the next working day because it just ruins your evening your times that you're meant to be spending together and just be mindful that the business isn't your whole life you are still husband and wife you are you still have a relationship you might still be mum and dad to children the business doesn't have to take over and it's very important that you don't allow it to either so what is the one thing? I feel like I've spoken a lot about the business, how things are going, what I've learned, but what is the one thing I'd do differently? And I'm going to be completely honest because I'm going into a phase of my business where it's been unnavigated before. It's very bumpy and there's lots of challenges. And I, for one, am looking at it in a really positive way. But the one thing, it's directly linked to where we are now, the one thing I'd do it differently is I would never try to get as big as we did, as we wanted to. We have tried probably three times to grow this business to a large business. I felt that we had to be, and Mike was on the same page, we had to be a bigger business in order to be successful. We had to be big. We had to have lots of teams. This was the only way to get towards our goal, our exit plan, our goal in life, our income goal. However, it's not. And what I wish I'd done is kept it smaller from the beginning, but run it at a much better profit margin. And that would come back to really focusing on building that brand, working on client communication. So you are exemplary at that. And also making sure that we're planning everything from the start and making sure we're not afraid to charge higher prices at the beginning. So it's really keeping it small, but running at an increased profit. And there's lots of ways you can do this. And there's lots of ways that you can change in your business to make sure you are doing all of these things. But if I was going to say what my biggest headache and my biggest issue has been over the last 14 years it's staff and I'm not against people wanting to grow and I'm not against people employing people but for me it's been the biggest headache it's been the thing that has pushed us to our limits as a company as a husband and wife it has been the thing that has almost made or broken our business multiple times and I am just completely done so now we are at a point where I literally have two of my most trusted people running the jobs. That is Mike being the head of one team and Luke, who's been with me for 10 years, heading the other team. And then we are using subcontractors only to deliver on labor and getting in specialists where we need to. So where we recently had a pond project, we get in a pond specialist to do that level of work. We have a really trusted brickie I've known for so many years who actually babysits my dog when we go on holiday and he will do all the brickwork. So making sure that we can subcontract out. I do have a ground working company that we can utilize for ground works. I can call upon a couple of really good subbies that I know will do a good job because they were trained by us and they used to work for us. So I am now changing my whole business model and I wish I'd done it sooner. I am not going to lie. I wish I'd done it sooner, but I was blinded by my bigger goal. And this is why I said earlier, dreaming big is great, but it doesn't always pan out. And if it doesn't pan out, what is your next strategy? What are, what are you going to do? And also, most importantly, what do you really want from life? Me and Mike have realized now we're heading firmly. We're firmly in our 40s heading towards our 50s. That's a long time away. But either way, we are in that period of life where he doesn't want to be on the tools for the rest of his life. And I don't want to be arguing with members of staff because I'm not being funny. All that all the headaches have come from 
staff members and having to now where legislation is so strict and tight employees have far more rights than business owners themselves and maybe I'm speaking out of turn but for me it just doesn't work so we are now going back to going back to the our roots we're going back small in order to begin running this company at a much smaller level but working on really prestigious high-end high quality projects that will increase profit margins and to do that i am focusing on finance cash flow forecasting and planning i'm making sure that our marketing strategy is working and reviewing it all of the time and changing things where i need to but i'm no longer doing things for the accolades so there is no longer oh wouldn't it be lovely if we went to an award ceremony I'm sorry, but no, I think awards are great and they build your business, but I am not wasting my time doing free gardens, working on going to award ceremonies, stuff like that. My new aim or our new aim is head down and crack on and look at all the little things I teach my clients in, over at the Landscapes Coach. It's looking at how are you planning your next stages in your business and what are the action steps you need to do now? How is your cash flow looking regularly, not just once in a blue moon? What decisions need to be made from those facts? Are you reviewing your marketing and your sales strategy? Because if not, you really need to. We need to know where the leads are coming in, what's working, what isn't working, where you are spending your money and should you be spending it somewhere else? Have you got the finance to grow or not grow? What are you going to do about that? Are you going to apply for some, get investors, just do it off the cuff? Again, it goes back to your cash flow. And also looking at job costings with a fine tooth comb, making sure that you are making profit. Because if you're not making money, there really is no point. I've got to the point in our lives where if it's not making money, we don't do it. And that's not being mean or unreasonable. It's just facts. If you don't make profit, you don't have a business and therefore you have no income so therefore you can't do the things you want to do in your life so it's getting really harsh but fair so it's really important to think about what you want to do in your business it's not just you don't have to grow you don't have to do things one way it's about sitting with your goals your aspirations your goals for life what resources do you have available to you do you have a coach and mentor to help you navigate the journey i'm over here if you need some help and Who's supporting you? Do you have a good support network? Are you going to be able to do all these things that you want to do? Or should you do something different? Could you think outside the box? Could you change your business model or could you differentiate your services? Could you create a better USP for your for you and your business? All of these things are really important, but be mindful. Think about how you have, you know, Reflect on your own business journeys. That's what I'm getting to. Please reflect on your own business journeys from what you've achieved, what wasn't a success, what helped you at what time, what you could do more of or should do more of. And consider one thing that you might do differently. It's really important. And then message me because I'm really interested to hear your feedback because I'm just saying it from my perspective. But everyone has different journeys in life, different businesses, and it's really interesting to find out. So what's Reflect on your business journey and let me know what is one thing you would do differently. So thank you for joining me on this podcast. It's been a little bit more personal than usual. I hope you've enjoyed it. Next week, I will have finished my second bodybuilding competition and I'll probably have a few takeaways from life and the next phase in the Aura Landscapes journey. If you would like help with coaching, mentoring, support, get in touch drop me a DM or email Paula at thelandscapescoach.co.uk or just message me. If you want to leave a review, that'd be fantastic because it gets me in front of more people that need some inspiration and motivation when they are in their businesses. So thank you again. And I will see you next week for another episode of the Limitless Landscapes podcast. Ciao for now, guys.